everybody, welcome to the homestead. I'm out here in the greenhouse. I want to get on and give you a quick rundown on what's going on, what's growing, uh, what our plans are for the upcoming spring. It's March, I think March 12th today. And so we are, I mean, we are full speed ahead when it comes to growing right now and getting things ready for spring. And a lot of the stuff that's going to be going out in the garden soon has been started right here in the greenhouse. Let me go ahead and give you a walkthrough of what we're doing right now. Okay, so what you see right now is some cabbages, um, all kinds of different uh, brassicas, different types of brassicas. We have a number of cabbages here that'll be, that are looking really good. Um, this cabbage here is looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to give it a little bit longer to go before we harvest that one. There's a couple of others over here that are ready to harvest almost right there. Um, a lot of these cabbages, I think I found something, um, just a really good technique to get things going for the spring. A lot of these cabbage, cabbages that you see here are just really young. Um, like this one right here, um, this one here, there's some other ones, maybe this one here, and a couple of others over on the other side. This there. Uh, these things are just, I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and take these and plant these out in the garden. I need to clear out some of the bed space here because I got a lot of stuff that's gonna be going on in the spring uh, that I wanna plant here in the greenhouse um, uh, to get it going out in the garden. So you know, these are new plants, like some, some of these young plants over here, so these are new cabbages. Uh, they're really small. I'm gonna take all of these, uproot them out of the greenhouse and put them in the garden and get a head start uh, for the garden this year. And I have other sprouts over there, uh, cabbages, broccolis, and things like that, just new sprouts that are coming up. Those will also go in the garden, but these are gonna give me an early harvest in the spring, while those will take a little bit longer and be ready to harvest before spring, you know, by the time spring is almost over and summer is around the corner. But these will be able to harvest in the early spring because they're gonna go ahead and just shoot right up uh, and do really well. Uh, let's see what else I got going on over here. This is a tree, this is a fig tree. That a friend of mine, Travis, uh, who you've seen in my videos before, um, uh, sent over to me and gave me, and I planted it right in the grow beds. And uh, it seems like it's doing okay. There's nothing really sprouting on it yet. Uh, there are some buds coming in on the tips of these branches here. I don't know if you can see those buds, but the buds are coming in. And so we're really looking forward to see what this fig tree does. And we're going to let this go in the greenhouse. Now, according to Travis, you can basically let this go up. It'll grow up to almost the ceiling there. And we will uh, trim it back every year and prune it back every year. And he says that you can even take some of the clippings off of this when you prune it and then plant them right in the grow beds and they will take root. And so maybe we'll be able to share some of those new starts uh, for fig trees with neighbors if they have a way to keep them out of the elements. We get pretty cold here, so I don't think it'll, you know, grow very well in the wintertime outside of the greenhouse. But I think uh, if someone has a greenhouse, we could absolutely share the cuttings of this fig tree with them and they'll be able to have their own fig tree. So that's kind of neat. Over here, we have some pak choy that's coming up, looking pretty good. Got an early start on those, and um, hopefully we'll have some pak choy here pretty soon. And a number of the beds that you see that look like they don't have anything in them, they, they have pak choy growing in them. Over here as well, uh, some pak choy sprouts are coming up. Um, still have some uh, uh, spinach that's coming up. It's still alive and, and doing. We've been harvesting, just clipping these off as they get big enough, and we've been eating them. They're, they taste delicious. Over here... I have all of our red Russian kale. This is this stuff is really delicious, but it's about time for it all to come up. We've been eating off off this all winter. I have at least for sure, and uh, we'll be taking these out and be planting peas in here the next few days. I have peas ready to go, and the stringers that you see uh, from last year when we had peas growing in here, they're still there. So uh, it works very well for these peas just to run right up these stringers here, all the way to the ceiling. And so we're gonna go ahead and plant peas in these beds as soon as I remove those up here in the next day or so, a couple days. Over here, this is uh, the trays that I have going on. I have some shelving that we put inside the greenhouse. Uh, just give you a rundown of what I got going on here. These are some sprouts that were given to me by a neighbor of ours. Uh, her name is Heidi, and uh, she, uh, some of them just kind of got, I guess she planted too many in a tray, and some of them you know, just kind of took some hits. So we thinned some of these out and um gonna see which ones survive this i believe is let me see what these are these are brussels sprouts and i think you're supposed to plant brussels sprouts more in the fall uh, but we're gonna see if we can get those to uh, produce something and keep them alive during the summer and maybe in the fall they'll, they'll be we can harvest them i don't know we're gonna see how that works i'm not sure these are our arkansas traveler tomatoes 
uh, they're just they've just been planted we have Arkansas traveler tomatoes being planted in a number of different varieties uh, here either in the greenhouse and also outside in the garden um, we're planting some in some of those uh, milk carton uh, starter containers and we're gonna see if that works we're gonna try to do a number of different ways to plant Arkansas travelers we love these last year they worked really well and so uh, we got some of those there starting to sprout uh, we just planted these. Also, these are our Mary tomatoes. I just call them Mary tomatoes. They were given to us by a friend named Mary, and they were uh, hand. It's a hand variety. It's hand uh, pollinated. I guess somebody, somebody did, had done a cross uh, of the of a number of different tomatoes in the Ozarks, and uh, they're an heirloom variety. And uh, he developed them to basically withstand the heat of the Ozarks. And we planted these last year. They did excellent. I, one of my favorite tomatoes. And so we, we're going to plant some of those again this year. And I just call them Mary tomatoes because a friend of mine named Mary gave them to me. Uh, here we have some more sprouts. I think these are broccoli sprouts. Uh, we thinned these out and put these in some containers. And we have some more down here. These are um, cabbages. These are some more cabbages that we got started. These are broccoli. And down here we have some more cabbages right there over here let's see there's just some these are just some spray bottles that I come I just use these to keep them moist um, let's see what we got over here this is the secret weapon that we have here for the homestead when we grow stuff it's called pure protein excellent uh, excellent uh, uh, fertilizer for your plants in your garden we mix this with our compost teas does an unbelievable job for your tomatoes it basically fish protein cod fish uh, dried codfish protein stinks to high heaven but does wonders for your plants we have oyster shells back there that we use to keep the ph um, up inside the aquaponic system over here is the neem oil that we use uh, throughout the garden especially on our potatoes to keep the pest down does a great job it's an organic uh, leaf polish uh, comes from the neem tree in india it's the oil from that tree and uh, from i believe the seeds of that tree that are ground up and, pure and turned into oil unbelievable works great for keeping pests down and we mix that with Dr. Bronner's Sal Suds, an organic uh, so soap that helps to uh, emulsify with the oil and adhere to the plants. So we combine these two when we spray them on the plants. Back here, this is just fish food uh, that we give to our fish, our bluegill. Uh, this little tool here is a great little tool. I use this all the time uh, for just making holes into the garden. Got some tape wrapped around it with some padding. A friend of mine gave this to me and it works great for putting holes in the garden and just start getting your starts into the garden. So I use that quite a bit when it comes time to planting. Um, got some popsicle seed, uh, popsicle sticks here that we use for labeling in a Sharpie. And down here, this is worm pea. Uh, it's the only way I can describe it. It comes from our worm farm. It's like the liquid that is a result of all of the worms working in the worm farm, and we collect that, and we will use that for our composting tea throughout the summer. Uh, works pretty good. Used a little bit of it last year. I'm going to continue to use it this year. Of course, 550 cord. There's a lot of uses you can use, use for that around the homestead and especially the garden. Uh, we have a bleach chem sprayer. Uh, this is uh, basically it's a, just a, any uh, atomizer, atomizing sprayer that you can buy at any Walmart. And uh, we use it for our um, putting on our, um, our compost teas and a number of other things that we use. And also for our uh, neem oil uh, to keep pest away from our plants, uh, we use that to put that on the garden. And then I already showed you the cabbage plants there. And so we have a number of other trays that we use to maybe get some more starts going down here. Uh, down here before, I, I used to have a bunch of weeds and some, and some uh, grasses that came up. And I, put, I took the shelving out this, this spring and I put um, uh, some newspaper down. We're going to cover this with sawdust, like you see sawdust here all over the floor, uh, to keep weeds from coming up around the shelving area. So that's why the newspaper is there. But all of this is just working real well. We're getting ready to clear a bunch of these beds and get a lot of the stuff that's in these beds out in the garden. All of these new cabbage plants here will be planted in the garden. And give us a head start on, on, the, on the cabbages. I got some old uh, celery here that's still going. And uh, here's some kale. This stuff is delicious, by the way. I love eating that. It is just delicious. Good stuff. Mm. Other than that, I got some broccoli over here. All of this broccoli, uh, a lot of this stuff is actually putting out some florets already prematurely. The smaller ones will go in the garden 
and I'll put the new sprouts in the garden as well once they get a little bit older. But the young ones that we'll put in the garden will give us some uh, early uh, early broccoli. So we're kind of happy about that. And one of the benefits of putting out a bunch of broccoli in these grow beds, they all sprout up, but you can eat the sprouts. I mean, when they're young like that, you can take that plant right there and just eat it. It's great. It's delicious. Love it. Got some onions and some other things scattered around that uh, we're going to be either harvesting soon or putting out in the garden. And so kind of excited spring is here. I kind of wanted to give you a rundown. The fish, people are always asking about the fish. The fish are bluegill that we have in our aquaponics system. And so I have it kind of turned off right now so you can hear me. But uh, the fish are doing wonderful. They're a good four to five inches in length, maybe six inches. There's some big ones in there. And uh, uh, we're going to let these grow for a whole other year to see how big we can get them. These two tanks right here will eventually, probably in the next month or so, be combined into those two tanks. Each tank has about 75 fish inside of it, and we will go ahead and empty these two tanks into those two tanks, and then we'll start another 150 fish into each one of these two tanks, so that every year we can basically harvest, out of these two tanks, harvest about 300 fish per year. So it's a pretty good, pretty good harvest uh, every year of, of bluegill fish. So it's going to give us a lot of uh, good fish. We love fish fries, and bluegill tastes great. So... Anyway, just wanted to kind of give you an update on what's going on just with the camera, not using the tripod or using the microphone at all. I just wanted to kind of give you a rundown of what's going on inside the greenhouse. But the real magic is what's going to be happening outside in the next few months. Let's go ahead and take a look out here. It's kind of a dreary day right now, but uh, the, basically the garden is ready. we got a lot of... Uh, work still to do on the garden, but we got a lot of plans. We're going to be putting in some raised beds over there and doing a lot more things over there this year. Um, but the Achicha Arbor is ready. We got some Achicha seeds we're going to get ready to plant in there. And so uh, this is going to be the pepper area. We're going to plant all kinds of pepper plants in here. A lot, whole, huge variety of pepper plants. And uh, so just wanted to give you an update. I hope you guys are getting your guys. I hope you guys are getting your garden ready. I hope you guys are getting ready for spring. I know we are. All right, we'll leave it at that. We'll see you next time on the homestead. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button below the video. It really makes creating these videos worthwhile. If you want to make sure to never miss a new video, be sure to click the subscribe button. Now you can get your homesteading questions answered. Visit us at our contact page on anamericanhomestead.com and send us your questions. Maybe we'll pick your question for a future video or article on our website.